Hey everybody, Big Anklevich here, podcaster, author, and carnivore, and it's now day 25 of the Beef, Butter, Bacon, and Eggs Challenge. Um, and you know, it's, it's really humming along. It's a 90-day challenge, so we're not we're even close to being done, but we're almost done with the whole month. That's pretty exciting. So uh, yeah, what did we do today? Well, let's head over and see our daily videos and see what they had to say. Hey everybody, it is day 25, which is Sunday, and uh, it was my, you know, it's the good part of the week where I get to eat two days in a row. <laughs> so this morning I got up and I had bacon and eggs for breakfast, and um, they were delish, and it was, uh, it was nice. And then uh, I was full for a good while, and then uh, I was ready to eat, sadly, before I was able to eat. I was out and about and I wasn't able to eat my second meal until a little later. Uh, but when I got home, I warmed up uh, what was left of the roast that I had cooked, was that yesterday? Cooked recently anyway, <laughs> I think it was yesterday. Uh, yes, yeah, so the roast that I had, um, I ate the rest of that. It wasn't really very much, I was kind of bummed. Uh, so I was still hungry and so I took uh, what ground beef that I have, uh, the chub of ground beef that I have and uh, I cut off three little burger patties and fried those up, and then I ate those uh, as the rest of my meal. I forgot to take a picture of those. I don't know why. I, I swear I thought about taking a picture while I had it in front of me, but then I never did. Uh, but with all of that stuff, I ate a fair amount of butter, um, trying to keep that fat up really good and high. Uh, if for nothing else, I have dry skin, and I hear that eating lots of fat will f really help your dry skin. Um, does butter count as dairy? I wonder about that. Do I need, should I try and switch to just eating, I don't know, spoonfuls of tallow or lard or something with stuff instead of butter? Um, anyways, uh... I know that dairy can cause you to have dry skin, so that would be really counteract counterintuitive if I was doing that. Counterintuitive? Counteractive? I don't know. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so uh, now I'm fasting again, and uh, I will fast all day tomorrow and through to Tuesday. Um, I think later this week, I probably won't do it for this one, but in next uh, my next fast and the fast after that, I'm going to try a fat fast, which that's going to be tough. Because, uh, you know, like Marshall was saying, he hates to eat butter just by itself. Butter. Um, and that's what you would have to do for a fat fast, is just eat butter by itself. If you get hungry, you just eat butter to dull the uh, the hunger. And maybe I'll try that. I don't know if I need to. Maybe I don't even need to. Maybe I'm just fine as is. Um, sometimes I think I should try it, though. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, that is day 25. Hey, this is my report for day number 25 of the Beef, Butter, Bacon, and Egg Challenge. Uh, day 25 was yesterday for me. We were traveling back uh, from our vacation down in Utah, and I didn't eat a thing. You know, we went to the store the night before, and uh, the kids got, got snacks, and we got some water and, and things to prepare for the trip home, you know, so they got cookies, they got candy, they got crackers, uh, some pepperoni and cheese, which if I was doing regular carnivore, I could have partaken in that. But anyway, nothing for me to eat. Um, and I didn't want to get anything special. I already had the, the, all those meatballs that I prepared. There were still several of those left and my, uh, hard boiled eggs that I brought with me. Um, I'd eaten a few of those over, the, over the course of the trip, but, uh, there were still quite a few left. And, but I didn't feel like eating. So all the, all the way traveling, I didn't eat a thing. I just drank a lot of water and we drove on and, uh, got home and, and, uh, did fine. And I even waited a little bit after we got home in the afternoon, uh, before I cooked anything up. And so what I did is I took those, all those meatballs and I cut them up into smaller portions and I, uh, cooked up a pound of bacon. And then I threw all the, those, the remnants of the meatballs in the bacon grease and kind of cooked that up crispy. And then I also took those hard boiled eggs. I think there were, there were probably about eight of those eggs, seven or eight of those eggs left. And I cut those into smaller chunks 
and I combine, I cut up the bacon that I had cooked. And so I combine the bacon and the m meatballs and put that through that together. It was all hot. And then I put the diced eggs in there and mixed it all up and just kind of made this huge bowl of meat and eggs. And, uh, I thought, boy, I don't know if I can eat all this. And, uh, but it was a pretty big bowl. And, uh, I just sat down and we were looking at pictures and stuff from our trip. And I was just eating out of this bowl, this big old bowl with a spoon. And I, I didn't make it all the way through. That was quite a bit. I didn't know if I could eat all that in one sitting. And I didn't. And so there's some left over for today or later on. But, um, yeah, it, that's all I had yesterday. And, uh, I felt pretty good. You know, usually when I'm traveling, you know, I used to always have m and peanut M&Ms with me. I'd have jerky. I'd have, you know, whatever. Uh, we'd always usually have wheat thins and my wife would put the squirt cheese on the wheat thins and we'd eat that or whatever. And, you know, traveling was an excuse to snack. And because you're going down the road, you need to keep your yourself uh, so you don't get tired. So you might as well s snack on M&Ms or whatever else. And I didn't do that. I didn't even des really desire. Uh, I guess the only temptation I might have had is my wife got some strawberries and she was eating some strawberries and I could smell the strawberries and that that would have been pretty good. But um, I really it wasn't like I was like, oh, give me a strawberry or stop eating those because you're driving me crazy. Um, I was fine. I was I had my water. I, I was full from the day before. You know, I had all those steaks the day before. So. Uh, I felt pretty good, and I and I was planning in my head, okay, what am I going to do with all these meatballs? What am I going to do with all these eggs? And I said, oh, I can just get rid of them in, in one meal. And uh, so that's what I had, and we'll go from here. Okay, so there you go. We uh, we had some, some things going on. <laughs> uh, Marshall is traveling back again, and... Like I was saying yesterday, you know, you, you, uh, if you can fast, then some things just aren't a big deal. You know, he had his whole family in the car just scarfing on just all sorts of garbage chips and Cheez-Its and M&Ms. And, you know, that used to be his thing. You would eat all those things on the way as well. And it's always been an excuse for me, too. Uh, my wife often says that, yeah, you got to have snacks while you're driving because it's just, you just... You want it, you feel like you gotta have something. You know, you're just sitting there. What else are you gonna do? You gotta eat, right? Because, like, how else do you entertain yourself? But that's one of those things that I told this to Marshall way back when we first started up in any of these carnivore challenges is that if, uh, you know, the, the key with carnivore is to learn to think of your food as fuel and not as entertainment. And I think most of us think of food as entertainment uh, in today's day and age. You know, we just want something to, to be fun. We don't want to just eat a meal to be full and have the energy that we need. We want it to be some kind of an experience. So, you know, we want to go to a restaurant where they make us something fancy or uh, you know, we're going to look up special recipes and, you know, do all this crazy stuff. But, you know, I think it's fine for that to be a small portion of the deal behind it all. But if it's your main focus, you're going to have things out of focus. You know what I mean? You're going to be looking into too much into trying to be entertained. And that's going to lead you to becoming uh, overweight. You know, it's just going to lead you into eating stuff that you shouldn't and doing things that you shouldn't, and then you're going to pay for it. So, you know, it's a real key to make sure that you're eating your food as fuel, not as entertainment. And that's pretty cool to see Marshall doing that on his drive home. He didn't even eat. He didn't have to be entertained. He just had a drink every now and then when he felt like it. Uh, and uh, the worst thing that temptation that he faced was the strawberries just because they smell nice and I can understand how he feels. I love strawberries. I, I you know, I think that they're one of the really tastiest things, although you, you have to get them when they're just right. That's one of the problems with strawberries is they're ripe for 
this much time and then they're rotten and before that they're sour and they're not ripe and you know <laughs> strawberries are tough most of the time you get them and they're just you know hard and and sour and you gotta wait and then if you wait too long well shoot it's too late now they're all mushy and nasty and now they're growing fuzz i mentioned that in an earlier uh, video you know that's one thing you don't have to worry so much about with meat takes a lot longer for meat to go bad as long as you got yourself a refrigerator to keep it in or a freezer you can keep it for even way longer you know but with my family when we're buying uh produce uh i've taken to just say we're buying compost because that's mostly what it winds up being the stuff just sits in the fridge nobody eats it and then it's foul and raunch raunchy and we got to throw it out which is frustrating. I wish I could get everybody to go carnivore with me so we wouldn't have to do that anymore. Just forget the stupid grocery store for, for uh, you know, produce. And we can just stick to meat. We just go to the meat market. I noticed there's a meat market not far from here. I'm going to have to go check that out. See uh, what kind of prices, what kind of cuts, what kind of stuff I can get there could be good. I guess I'll report in on that when I when I do that. Uh, but for now, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow on Big Anklevich on Health. The key with carnivore is to learn to think of your food as fuel and not as entertainment, you know? And I think most of us think of... Damn you.